I suppose the smart is in the title, so it's why it's called Herbie Smart, at least something is smart in what I'm going to say. Uh, so uh, I want to take you to a very exciting concept, exciting enough for, so that four co-founders that are 55 each, but not of age, of experience in logistics, have decided to uh, play uh, the startup game again because we were convinced it was the proper time to bring something that is now technologically possible and that can reshape the complete supply chain. So I know the topic is about the last mile, but I'm going to take you from the first mile. So I'm not saying first mile from China when you import goods, but at least first mile when you're in the large DCs uh, storing and preparing orders. And from there, to reshape the supply chain, the distribution all the way to the, 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 the city, being uh, shops, malls, or homes. The good news is I don't have a movie, but the bad news is I don't have slides as well. Okay, so the first slide that you see now, great, is about the current situation and briefly showing that the world, but we don't have enough time to talk about the world globally, but is organized still in silos. And the supply chain is definitely organized in silos with a lot of different actors. So you have the shippers, uh, can be La Ruche or can be Carrefour. They're both shippers for us. The three PLs, and you have DB Schenker and a lot of others. Um, different distribution channels, because thanks to internet or because of internet, we have a lot more various ways of distributing products into the city because you want to deliver shops, deliver homes, deliver picking uh, locations, uh, lockers, whatever. Because of internet also, we saw a new actor uh, getting interested in uh, the supply chain, that's the city. Because before, we used to say no one when is uh, in, in uh, uh, the public administration or uh, uh, public authority is interested in freight because freight doesn't vote, parcels don't vote. That's what we used to say in the French organizations. But with internet, it's not that true because you see parcels coming to your home, <coughs> so you're more interested in logistics. You see real logistics for the first time before you were you had articles in shops. Now you have parcels in your mailbox. So the cities start to realize it's key for their future to take that into consideration. But it's, it's a real burden because it's not the job, it's not the competency, and it's a massive issue because you have congestion, pollution, noise, all, all, all because of this multiplication of parcels, which doesn't mean a multiplication of sales. And at the end, all of us as end users, we want everything for free because Amazon told us that logistics is for free. So. Oh, I missed one? No? Okay. There was supposed to be one, but maybe the other. Yeah, here it is. I'll come back to the other one. It's just a mistake in the order. So that's the goal of Herbismart, is to break the silos among all these actors and create for the first time, we believe in the world. So far, we couldn't find anyone doing the same thing. So if there's someone here, please let me know. Um, to organize a scheme that is multi-shippers, multi 3PLs, multi-channel, and by consequence, multi-model, because when you have enough volume to combine, you can, in an economical way, uh, fill a, a, a barge or fill a train, which is most of the time impossible up to now. So the idea is to create not a platform, and that's where I, I want to be very clear. We're not a new web platform saying we're going to put capacity and needs in relationship. That works when you're Uber or Airbnb because it's a simple relationship. When it comes to professional logistics, it's a complex uh, 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 pileup of tasks. If you don't have someone to coordinate and optimize these tasks, there's no way you can let people freely do it. It works. They will work together, but it won't be optimum. And that's a key issue for us with our background in logistics. The target, I have to go back is that. So it's not a real picture. I don't want to <laughs> be misinterpreted. 
but the goal is to say, if we can organize the collection of goods from plenty of different warehouses and follow these goods all the way to the city, when we come around the city in the, in the peri-urban area, and we, we will have to stop somewhere because the big truck won't go inside the city, then because we know everything, we can organize the truck or any means, can be bikes, can be autonomous vehicles, drone, you name it. The physical means is not the issue, but you can organize that means of transportation in such a way that you will have one truck in one street to deliver both shops and homes. So the big concept is rather than having as many trucks as shops every morning in every street, and then even if they start full, as we heard from Dibyshenko, they keep going from one street to another for the different customers. Here you have one truck that has only customers in a direct neighborhood to deliver. If you do that, you reduce the congestion, you reduce the gas emission because the, the, the truck is able to park in that street. And when it's empty, you do all the reverse logistics. So you also optimize the flow of goods getting out of the city, returns, and sold goods, containers, clean waste, carton, plastic, even some others. And all that comes back to the peri-urban area, warehouse, and from there is the starting point for combined logistics to another city. So if you follow me and visualize that network on the national or European level, you get a fully optimum way to get goods from anywhere to anywhere. And that's where I come here. And that's why we call it a meta platform, because it's really a global organization, and we are not a, 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 a proper transportation company. We have no asset, we don't have a truck, we don't have a warehouse. We organize flows, but we sell the, the, the transportation order to, to the shipper, we buy it from a carrier. And we only optimize and play as a trustee in the middle. And because of the complexity of that operation, because if you realize several hundreds of starting points that are warehouses and several hundreds of ending points that are the, the cities, it means millions of parcels and you need full traceability parcel per parcel because when you order a parcel on the internet you want to track it. You also need visualization, mobility, um, uh, mobile devices for the, the, the truck drivers. And you need to take into account orders that come any minute so you cannot anticipate them. Transportation capacities, even if you have contracts with the carriers, that will vary from one day to another because there will always be a truck that is broken or a driver that is sick. And you will have issue with the weather, with uh, the congestion, with uh, roadworks in the city and so on. So the mass of data that you need to combine and, 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 and uh, process is so huge that you cannot do it with regular IT systems. So we turn ourselves to other worlds that were more advanced in that field, namely the military and the finance worlds, where people have been working on this kind of multi-agent optimization systems for over 10 years. And we took such an engine from a German development team that I was lucky enough to, to work with some 15 years ago to adapt that to Urbismart. And that was the only way to dream of such a, a context. So I, I won't go into more, more detail on the te technology because we don't have time, but it's really trying to take these global models that coordinate complex supply networks and use what they call cybernetics in this closed loop system that in real time keeps finding the best solution when any unplanned event arises. So it, it sounds Star Wars a bit, but actually Star Wars is not far from reality, so that's what my technologists say. And um, with that, we can adapt in real time to whatever orders we have to deal with, and we can adapt to whatever new physical device we will have to integrate in the process. If tomorrow we want to have a, a, a route with bicycles or pedestrians, we just need to give them on their mobile or on their smartphone a way to track what they're doing so we can keep 
the, 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 the traceability for the shipper and for the end user, but it's possible. On the other hand, if it's drone or if it's an autonomous vehicle, it doesn't matter. So what we're trying to build is really this logical backbone to enable future developments of physical means, whatever the mean, and have this uh, processing capacity and real-time optimization capacity so we can still be optimum. Because something I didn't say but is critical in logistics, and most people forget that, is logistics is a cost center. I don't know if there are shippers in the room, but when you're a shipper, your only dream is not to pay for logistics. When we can teleport products, it's a dream. No more logistics, everyone's happy. But even if we can digitalize the world, so far there will still be parcels, drivers, and uh, trucks. So you need to have the minimum cost, even if you add extra services and, and value-added services on the way. So that's why we don't focus on the last mile, because the last mile is the shortest and the most difficult to achieve. If you start from the first mile, being the, the large warehouse all the way, then you have enough room for combination, and then you have real room for optimization. So that's where we are. And if there are financial people, we're looking for money, by the way. So that's the right time. Otherwise, thank you very much. We have time for one question. So far, they all have been great. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yours. I'm sure it will be great. I hope. Um, I have a question. So what you want is for it to be a really optimal system. It needs to have all the players inside your platform, like to, for it to be. But then that will lead to some of monopolistic behavior. And then I want to know more what is your business model in terms of money yep. to know and what would you do to avoid such monopoly because then it would be like a public good and we wouldn't want one company to have that power. Of, of course. The, the, the model sounds like monopolistic, I fully agree. The reality will never be monopolistic. You have so many different goods and so many different uh, uh, um, ways of doing logistics that our goal is only to combine what can be combined. First of all, there's a limitation in the category of products you can put in the same truck. You will never put in the same truck non-food and food, dry and frozen, all these kind of things. Then you have the shape, the size of the products. We, we start with non-food product that can be handled with one person, but you have larger products, you have uh, fridges and all these kind of things. So all these categories mean different activities. Then you have large companies, brands, that have a centralized decision center where we can discuss with someone, and all the own accounts of smaller players. These ones, you cannot start with them, and I don't know what the model can bring. I agree with you, it shouldn't be a monopoly, that's for sure, otherwise it's dead by definition. Um, one, I think, is thinking of doing that, that's Amazon, because it's a logistics company. I mean, everyone thinking it's an it, it's a e-commerce company is wrong. It's a logistics company, and they are building the most fantastic logistics network. So what we want to do is not only break the silos between the players, it's also break the silos between the private and public world, because we need to have all the cities as partners and to evolve together with them in terms of the city policy and the evolution. Typically, if we get data and after a while know what it would mean if we had bigger trucks or smaller trucks or longer opening times to deliver city centers, then we can discuss with the city how to operate. But for that, we need that cooperation and collaboration with the cities. So our, uh, our DNA is not about captivating the flow, the, the, the flow. it's really about building an open model where all the, 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 the truck companies can apply. We need to be there, as I said, as the tower control, because otherwise it's not optimum. So yes, there's a kind, there's, there's a, a, a centralization in there, but we have to keep that as an open mind in terms of people who can be part of it or not. And by definition, it's so big. I mean, I think the, 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 the European logistics uh, business is 870 billion euros. 
Th there's no company who will handle that. So monopoly is not the issue. It's really the, the mindset when you build such a thing to keep open. And, and that's really why we started that. We're not trying to make something to capture customers. It's really, on the contrary, to be open to both shippers, 3PLs, and cities.